Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's April 15th, 2015. And here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, are the feds attempting to control the market by drying up ammo supplies? Well, in addition to billions of bullets previously bought by the federal government, the DHS now plans to purchase 62 million more rounds of AR-15 ammo. Plus, Eddie Craig in studio, and he's going to teach you how to keep your ass out of jail. That's coming up next, the InfoWars Nightly News. That's right, it is tax day, April 15th. And I'm wondering if you're like me and you have to pay your extortion fees to the private-run Federal Reserve. And you're talking about, what are you talking about, private-run Federal Reserve? Well, you can go to YouTube.com, the Alex Jones channel, and see It's a Wonderful Lie, the History of the Federal Reserve. Now, let's talk about the history of our border and the history of us funding our opposition, such as al-Qaeda, such as ISIS. And right now, Joe Biggs and Josh Owens are down there on the border, going down to Mexico, trying to find out what's going on with these ISIS rebels that apparently have a base right there in Mexico. So whether it takes planes, trains, automobiles, they are determined to get to the bottom of this, and you guys can stay tuned to InfoWars.com, also the Alex Jones channel on YouTube, and we'll bring you the latest updates as more come available. And updating the story that I guess they've been covering this since before I got here back in 2012, DHS and the bullets. The bullet scandal has been on Fox News, it's been all over. Many people have tried to debunk this, uh, saying that maybe you did this thousand bullets didn't happen, or maybe this 500. Maybe there's a, a misstep here or there. But by and large, I believe the count that DHS has is well over 2 billion bullets. And now we have the article, 62 million more rounds of AR-15 AR ammo. A posting on FezBizOps.gov this week reveals that DHS is looking to contract with a company to provide 12.6 million rounds of 223 Remington ammunition, that's AR-15, for the period of five years, totaling 62.5 million bullets. And also on the site, we have a purchase order so people can see that for themselves and know that we're not blowing smoke. Now I wanna go down to the graph here and show people the list of all the bullet purchases that we know about starting in April of 2012. And from April 2012 to February 2013, there was over, what's that, two billion right there of various calibers. And then you go down the list, you have DHS, uh, over 300,000 bullets of 40 caliber Smith & Wesson. You also have some AK-47 rounds. It's a 7.6 by 39 round, which the U.S. Army doesn't use. But for some, re for some reason, the U.S. Army decided to go buy that round. So I'm not exactly sure what these guys are planning, but it's very interesting to note how they are racking up these huge number of bullets. Furthermore, U.S. soldiers were shooting around 5.5 million rounds of ammunition per month during the war in Iraq, or 600, or excuse me, 66 million rounds annually. So you total that up, that's how much these guys are using an active war scenario, but now you need all these mass purchases of bullets for DHS, and I'm like, what do you guys need all these bullets for? Meanwhile, you, the normal citizen, if you wanna go buy a box of, or maybe more than a box of shotgun shells or two, two, three rounds for yourself, and you say, hey, I want to buy in bulk like DHS does so I can get a discount. They want you to fill out a paperwork. They want to uh, put you on some background check system. We need to know how many rounds of bullets that you're buying and what your purposes are for buying said bullets. Like, well, why don't you tell me why you need all these bullets if you want to come and crack down on me? So we'll keep you up to date on this. And uh, good job to Paul Joseph Watson. He's been covering this since, what, 2012. And now we have 2 billion or so bullets. So it's uh, a whole lot right there. And speaking of a man who caught a bullet recently, I've seen a lot of police shootings, uh, did a lot of reports on this. And recently there's a guy who was stopped by police and the officer said, hey, I need to see your license and registration. The man says, no problem, officer. I will retrieve said documents. He goes and reaches for them. And then the police shoot him in the stomach. I see your license, please. And this is one LeVar Jones of South Carolina. He was shot in the stomach for the accursed seatbelt violation. Uh, plenty of hostile criminal activity right there. 
But the cop was sacked and charged with felony assault and faces a maximum of 20 years in prison if he is found guilty. And this is happening more and more. It happened last year here in the city of Austin. Luckily, the guy didn't get shot or I don't... I'm pretty sure he didn't die. I'd have to double check that, but I don't think the guy died. But basically, he was pulled over. Uh, he's retrieving his license and registration, as they often request you to do. And the officer shoots at the guy. He's like, oh, he had something in his hand. He had his wallet that had his license and registration. And to talk more about this coming up at the end of the show, backed by popular demand, Eddie Craig. He's going to tell you what you need to do when you encounter the police in a police stop. He actually has a script that will keep your behind out of jail and hopefully will get you home without a bullet in your physique. So we'll move on to other things now. Small helicopter lands on west front of U.S. Capitol, pilot arrested. And this is a gentleman he wants to bring attention to campaign finance reform. So he decided to load up his little, I guess you call that a gyrocopter. I didn't even know those things were real. I saw them in movies, but I guess they are actual and functional. So he went into a no-fly zone. Uh, he was going to drop off some letters to his elected representatives. And once he hit the ground, they arrested the guy, sent the bomb squad out there to look at his vehicle. So think about this. Hillary's doing pretty much the same thing this guy's doing, going around trying to educate people about finance reform. I don't really take her too seriously, but she's driving around in a mystery machine and eating Chipotle and, you know, uh, having get guys, uh, well, I guess gay guys, bending over and grabbing their ankles for Hillary. I'm not making this up. You guys go find the article that Kit did just the other day on it. But I doubt she's going to come to the aid of this gentleman, uh, this individual. And hey, you know, yeah, he entered a no-fly zone. And uh, David Knight was just telling me a second ago, there's people on the big network, somebody, they should have shot this guy out the, out the sky. They have anti-aircraft weapons and they should have killed. He could have been a terrorist. Okay, now with this security state, police state, surveillance state apparatus, the NSA does not have the proper information to predict an attack on their own building. The White House has had multiple people jump the fence, even get into the White House. You got guys uh, flying around in their uh, little gyroscopes, which I have no issue with this guy. Yeah, he broke a law, but so did Kokesh when he racked a shotgun. He was just trying to prove a point. So all this to say for all this security stuff they have, it's just security theater. They don't really know. You got the Secret Service running around with the hookers and all kinds of silliness and things going on. So it's just security theater. It's just to make them feel safe and to take away your tax dollars while, while enslaving you and putting an oppressive government over you. And when I say oppressive government, I'm not talking about everybody in the government. Are the good people in the Border Patrol? Yes, good people in FBI, good people in CIA, good people in Secret Service, whatever else going on and on. But you have enough people at the top who are trying to come down on you, trying to brainwash you into thinking about guns in a vastly different way while they give guns to Mexican drug cartels and then want to come and arrest you if you sell a shotgun outside of their uh, jurisdiction. All types of silly things like that. But that's going on to a much broader topic than we have time for today. And we'll end with this before we go into more special reports. Uh, we also have a special report from Alex Jones' son, Rex, and also Rob Dew's son, Morgan, talking about how kids are not allowed to play outside, but we'll get to that after the break. But we'll go to break with this. Leaking of government officials' addresses accompanied by note warning of FEMA crackdown by NWO Satanists. That is quite the sensational headline, but it is all true. Material was apparently hacked from an unknown source, and the insinuation of right-wing extremists are to blame. So basically, somebody hacked into uh, some classified records, got the information for people who work in DHS, FBI, whatever else, and now they're threatening these people. And as I was just saying a second ago, do I have, do I take exception to some of the vast overreaches and outright criminal activity by some of the people in these organizations? Yes, do I want people to target them at their homes? Most definitely not. If they are doing criminal wrongdoing, they need to be brought into a court of law and held accountable for the actions in that setting. CBS News reports that the messages accompanying the material titled DHS, CIA, FBI, Traitors, Home Addresses, states, let these evil NWO Satanists know that there will be hell to pay for their 9-11 treason and for their future FEMA camp plan public crackdown treason also. It says, Jesus is Lord, and the public is in charge, not these satanic NWO stooges. So let's stop right there and address this. These, uh, I guess you would call them talking points, talking about uh, all these Satanists and the FEMA crackdown. And I think of all the things that alternative media uses, all the phrases, I think FEMA camps are probably the worst one. Because people type in FEMA camps and they can't really find anything or it's just some very... Uh, 
disreputable people just spouting about information, as opposed to if somebody asked me about FEMA camps, I direct them to things such as Rex 84, that is the plan for martial law in our country that will put people in da, 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 FEMA camps. So there you go, that's a little tip for the day. Now let's talk about Reuters and USA Today, as well as other media outlets have picked up on the story. And they are reporting that the terms are being used and accompanied by data used by conspiracy theorists to refer to totalitarian world government, talking about the NWO. And while they would like you to very much believe that the NWO is the creation of Alex Jones or somebody around that type of genre, uh, you can see videos, and we're about to play one for you right now, multiple politicians, including American presidents, uh, heads of states, uh, many other people as well, using the term new world order, world government, the type of world government we would all like to achieve. I believe that's an exact quote from one Barack Hussein Obama. So while they're trying to tell you that new world order has no basis in reality, uh, it very much is a plan. I'm not saying it's fully enacted, but it's a plan that some people would like to see, including former President George Bush Sr. Let's go to the report now, and then come back with more special reports. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations, a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It is a big idea a new world order, a world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used, I think, only once and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the beginning, order. The beginning of a new international order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. I think it's task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity and it isn't just a crisis. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of the, of the world. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. We are now facing a common challenge. And the challenge is how to build a world order for the first time in history on a global basis. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see a world order in the future with a multipolar uh, world order. I think a new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities and there going to, is going to have to be some sevel semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion 
and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. And I strongly believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. New World Order is the headline in the Globe and Mail in Canada. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Of course we are. We are absolutely slaves to central banks. <laughs> My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Did this thousand bullets didn't happen or maybe this 500 maybe there's a, a misstep here or there but by and large i believe the count that dhs has is well over two billion bullets and now we have the article 62 million more rounds of ar-15 ar-15 ammo a posting on fezbizops.gov this week reveals that dhs is looking to contract with a company to provide 12.6 million rounds of 223 remington ammunition that's ar-15 for the period of five years totaling. Are the feds attempting to control the market by drying up ammo supplies? Well, in addition to billions of bullets previously bought by the federal government, the DHS now plans to purchase 62 million more rounds of AR-15 ammo. Plus, Eddie Craig in studio, and he's going to teach you how to keep your ass out of jail. That's coming up next, the InfoWars Nightly News. That's right, it is tax day, April 15th. And I'm wondering if you're like me and you had to pay your extortion fees to the private-run Federal Reserve. And you're talking about, what are you talking about, private-run Federal Reserve? Well, you can go to YouTube.com, the Alex Jones channel, and see It's a Wonderful Lie, the History of the Federal Reserve. Now, let's talk about the history of our border and the history of us funding our opposition, such as al-Qaeda, such as ISIS. And right now, Joe Biggs and Josh Owens are down there on the border, going down to Mexico, trying to find out what's going on with these ISIS rebels that apparently have a base right there in Mexico. So whether it takes planes, trains, automobiles, they are determined to get to the bottom of this, and you guys can stay tuned to InfoWars.com, also the Alex Jones channel on YouTube, and we'll bring you the latest updates as more come available. And updating the story that I guess they've been covering this since before I got here back in 2012, DHS and the bullets. The bullet scandal has been on Fox News, it's been all over. Many people have tried to debunk this, uh, saying that maybe you Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's April 15th, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, 